My friend says Derek, you're circumstantial. Well, this gets more and more ridiculous the more I research. It is such fucking bullshit. Punctuated equilibrium originated as a logical consequence of Ernst Meyer's concept of genetic revolutions by Allo Patrick and especially Perry Patrick's speciation as applies to the fossil record. Although the sudden appearance of species and its relationship to speciation was proposed and identified by Mayer in 54, historians of science generally recognize the 1972 Eldridge and Gould paper as the basis of the new paleobiological research program. Punctuated equilibrium differs from Mayer's ideas mainly in that Eldridge and Gould placed considerably greatest emphasis on stasis, whereas Mayer was concerned with explaining the morphological discontinuity or sudden jumps found in the fossil record. Meyer later complimented Eldridge and Gould's paper, stating that evolutionary stasis has been unexpected by most evolutionary biologists and that punctuated equilibrium has had a major impact on paleontology and evolutionary biology. A year before the 1972 paper, Eldridge published a paper which suggested that gradual evolution was seldom seen in the fossil record and argued that Meyer's standard mechanism of allopatric speciation might be a possible resolution. Um, according to Gold, the ideas mostly came from Niles, with yours truly acting as a standing board and eventual scribe. I coined the term punctual equilibrium and wrote most of the 72 paper, but Niles is the proper first author. Uh, that's not the important part. The fossil record includes well-documented examples of both gradualism and punctual evolution. As such, much debate persists over the prominence of stasis in the fossil record. Before punctuated equilibrium, most evolutionists concerned stasis to be rare and important. The paleontologist George Gaylord Simpson, for example, believed that, phy that phy phyletic gradual evolution comprised 90% of evolution. More modern studies, including a meta-analysis examining 58 published studies on speciation patterns in the fossil record, showed 71% of species exhibited stasis and 63% were associated with punctuated patterns of evolutionary change. Um, it seems clear then that stasis is common and that had not been predicted from modern genetic studies. Hmm. A paramount example of evolutionary stasis is the fern. Based on paleontological evidence, it's remained unchanged even at the level of fossilized nuclei and chromosomes for at least 180 million years. Huh. So let's see what causes it. Allopatric speciation suggests that species with large central populations are stabilized by their large volume and process of, of gene flow. New and even beneficial mutations are diluted by the population's large size and are unable to reach fixation due to such factors as constantly changing environments. If this is the case, then the transformation of whole lineages should be rare, as the fossil record indicates. Smaller populations, on the other hand, which are isolated from the parental stock, are decoupled from the homogenizing effects of gene flow. In addition, pressure from natural selection is especially intense, as peripheral isolated populations exist at the outer edges of, of ecological tolerance. If evolution happens in these rare instances of allopatric speciation, then evidence of gradual evolution in the fossil record should be rare. This hypothesis was alluded to by Mayer in the closing paragraph of his 1954 paper. Although punctuated equilibrium generally applies to sexually reproducing organisms, some biologists have applied the model to non-sexual species, like viruses which cannot be stabilized by conventional gene flow. As time went on, Gold moved away from wedding punctuated equilibrium to allopatric speciation, particularly as evidence accumulated in support of other modes of speciation. Gold, for example, was particularly attracted to Douglas Fuchimia's work on the importance of reproductive isolating mechanisms. Many hypotheses have been proposed to explain the putative causes of stasis, Other plausible mechanisms have been suggested, including habitat tracking, stabilizing selection, the stensense maynard smith stability hypothesis, constraints imposed by the nature of subdivided populations, normalizing clade selection, and coinophilia. Okay, so let's, let me get this straight. The evolution we were all taught in school, we all agree now is bullshit. There's not gradual change over time, at least in the vast majority of cases. All scientists agree on that. There's no, no disputing that, okay? So, now we have to explain, even though it runs counter to the central thesis of Darwinian evolution, we have now 
to explain how it is that massive sudden changes occur and then long periods of stasis. Well, they've got how many different hypotheses? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven different possible explanations as to why this would occur. Evidence for the existence of stasis has also been corroborated from the genetics of sibling species, species which are morphologically indistinguishable, but whose proteins have diverged sufficiently to suggest they may have been separated for millions of years. Stasis may emerge as the theory's most important contribution to evolutionary science. In claiming that species typically undergo no further evolutionary change once speciation is complete, they are not claiming there is no change at all between one generation and the next. Lineages do change, but the change between generations does not accumulate. Instead, over time, the species wobbles about its phenotypic mean. Hmm. So, punctuated equilibrium has also been cited as contributing to the hypothesis that species are Darwinian individuals and not just classes, thereby providing a stronger framework for a hierarchical theory of evolution. Most confusion has arisen over what proponents of punctuated equilibrium actually argued, which, what mechanisms they advocated, how fast the punctuations were, what taxonomic scale their theory applied to, how revolutionary their claims that were intended to be, and how punctuated equilibrium related to other ideas like quantum evolution, saltationism, and mass extinction. So, salt, what is this thing? Saltationism. Gold's sympathetic treatment of Richard Goldschmidt, the controversial geneticist who advocated the idea of hopeful monsters, led some biologists to conclude that Gold's populations were occurring in single generation jumps. This interpretation has frequently been used by creationists to characterize the weakness of paleontological record and to portray contemporary evolutionary biology as advancing neo saltationism since we propose punctuated equilibrium to explain trends, it's infuriating to be quoted again and again by creationists as admitting the Falcon record includes no transitional forms. Transitional forms are generally lacking at the species level, but they are abundant between larger groups. Although there exists some debate over how long punctuations last, supporters of punctuated equilibrium generally place the figure between 50 and 100,000 years. Wow. But there's no explanation of how or why that's accepted and this is what everyone's getting all upset about me about disagreeing with I'm saying it's bullshit okay here's an idea why don't you prove to me that that's better a better explanation than epigenetic evolution where the changes are occurring in individuals um, genes because of stuff that happens to them over the course of life. In other words, actually adaptive changes that actually get passed down by genetic, by sexual reproduction that doesn't involve any mutation. Why is that not preferable? Give me any, any possible explanation as to why that's not a preferable explanation. It's not as full of concentric circle bullshit as the existing model. If you're still thinking that evolution is clear cut, that's how species originated. Why? You shouldn't. There's no reason to. It's obviously all bullshit. They don't even know. They have seven different explanations as possibly how, why, what the mechanism would be to cause these sudden 50,000 year periods where you've got shit tons of species. It's, it's, a, it's absurd. It withstands no scrutiny. I don't have to be a creationist to oppose bullshit. Cambrian explosion. How do we explain that? 
In 20 to 25 million years, most major animal phyla appeared in the fossil record. So all that evolution, all that gradual change over time or punctuated equilibrium or whatever you want to call about it, all that time, um, most of it wasn't used to evolve in anything. So what causes the sudden burst? Well, it, lots of different possible explanations. Changes in the abundance and diversity of some types of fossils have interpreted as evidence for attacks by animals or other organisms. Stromatolites, stubby pillars built by colonies of microorganisms, are a major constituent of the fossil record from about 2,700 2700 million years ago. But their abundance and diversity deeply declines deeply after about 1,250 million years ago. This decline has been attributed to the distribution by disruption by grazing and burrowing animals. The first Edicarin and Lois Cambrian skeletal fossils represent tubes and problematic sponge spicules. The oldest sponge spicules Although they're hard to classify as most other organisms of that period, they're important in two ways. These tubes are a device to rise over a substrate and competitors for effective feeding, and to a less degree, they serve as armor and protection, blah, blah, blah. In the lowest Cambrian, the stromatolites were decimated. This allowed animals to begin colonization of warm water pools with carbonate sedimentation. The event lasted for about the next 20 to 25 million years. Different authors break the explosion out in different stages in different ways. There is strong evidence Some say the evolutionary change was accelerated by an order of magnitude, but the presence of Precambrian animals somewhat dampens the bang of the explosion. Not only was the appearance of animals gradual, but their evolutionary radiation diversification may also not have been as rapid as once thought. Indeed, statistical analysis shows the Cambrian explosion was no faster than any other radiations in animals' history. However, it does seem that some innovations linked to the explosion, such as resistant armor, only evolved once in the animal lineage. This makes a lengthy and pre-Cambrian animal lineage harder to defend. Further, the conventional view that all phyla arose in the Cambrian is flawed. While the phyla may have been diversified in this time period, representatives of the crown groups of phyla did not appear until much later. What? Further, the mineralized phyla that form the basis of the fossil record may not be representative of other phyla, since most mineralized phyla originated in a benthic setting. <sighs> Ecological complexity among marine animals increased in the Cambrian as well as in the... However, recent research has overthrown the most popular idea that disparity was exceptionally high throughout the Cambrian before subsequently decreasing. In fact, disparity remains relatively low throughout the Cambrian with modern levels of disparity only attained after... The diversity of many Cambrian assemblages is similar to today's, and at a high level, diversity is thought by some to have risen relatively smoothly through the Cambrian, stabilizing somewhat in the Ordovician. This interpretation, however, glosses over the astonishing and fundamental pattern of basal polytomy and phylogenetic telescoping at or near the Cambrian boundary as seen in most animal lineages. Thus, Harry Blackmore and Whittington's questions regarding the abrupt nature of Cambrian explosion remain and have yet to be satisfactorily answered. <sighs> so, 
Now we backtracked. We really backtracked, haven't we? We started with Darwinian evolution and gradual change over time and evolving slowly over the course of four billion years. We backtracked way the fuck back from that now. And we're talking about most evolution occurring in the Cambrian period over the course of 20 to 25 million years and not having any adequate explanation for why. And yet we're still clinging to the Darwinian model. Why? How is it that Shane and Chad and whoever else is out there, Demon Windu, can be so dead set on defending this model that has shockingly, shockingly little credence to it? I mean, it's just like there are no warrants that substantiate this. And every explanation they come up with is just begging the question. Well, assuming that we're basically right about everything, how could we possibly explain this? I know concentric circles. The Earth is definitely the center of the universe. That's exactly what the fuck's happening with evolution. It's the helio, it's the geocentrism of the 21st century. It's time to jettison that bullshit. It doesn't fly. It holds no water. Boo failure, boo. So I have to say that shit. Good day, sir. Good day to you.